welcome to a new episode of the Zenzo Podcast. Um, I'm not sure which uh, episode this is because the last time I podcasted, it was almost a year ago. Um, so for those of you who are just starting to watch this podcast or just don't remember me, uh, my name is Kaoling, uh, Caroline, and um, I live in the Netherlands and I used to live in Utrecht. Uh, for those of you who remember, um, but for now, uh, but now we moved to a tiny village next to Utrecht, which is called the Bills, um, and it's really close, so uh, I can ride my bike. And within ten minutes, I'm in the city center of Utrecht again, so it's not really a big move. Um, though it felt like one, <laughs> but I'll tell you uh, later more uh, about that. Um, so after the last time I uh, talked with you, um, we had a pretty busy, well, uh, year, <laughs> I, I should say. So um, I'm just going to try and keep this short, but like tell you a little bit about what happened in the meantime so you are a little bit up to speed with <laughs> where we are now. Um, and thanks again for those who mes messaged or just said we miss your podcast. Because um, that's actually the reason <laughs> I thought, okay, you have to start again now. So, after last time, I think last time I told you guys that we were planning a trip to the US slash Canada, uh, which we did. Uh, first, we had um, the wedding of one of my best friends, uh, for which I designed the invitations and actually all the other print work, uh, which was really nice to do. Um, and then right the day after her wedding, um, we took a plane to Seattle. Um, so yeah, we rented an RV just uh, in a small town just above Seattle. Um, and it was, <laughs> was a really large one. We're in Europe, we're not used to the big vehicles you guys drive over there. So <laughs> we don't even, I mean, the trucks you drive we like very rarely see one and if we see one we're like this doesn't fit our roads what's <laughs> what are you doing um so yeah uh we rented it one like i wouldn't be allowed to drive one here because you need a separate driving license to drive <laughs> the big rv we rented over there um, but yeah, we could, so <laughs> we did. It was, it had nothing to do with camping anymore. It was like, it was like a tiny house. I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> how to describe it, but it was really fun to drive though. Uh, whenever I could, I drove the thing. So, um, I was actually more handy with it than she was, but you know, um, we're not going to tell him because, you know, men and their egos and stuff like that. <laughs> so from um, Seattle, we crossed the border with Canada and we went to Vancouver. We stayed there for two days. I visited a yarn shop, which was really nice. Um, don't remember the name right now, but uh, for those of you who want to know, ask me and I'll try and look it up. Uh, we also went to this place there near the water. I don't know what it's called either anymore. <laughs> okay, super nice story this. I don't remember anything I wanted to say. Uh, but for those of you who know Vancouver, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. It was close to the water. Uh, it had all these really small shops with handmade stuff. Um, really nice. Had some food. Oh, there was a lot of food there. Yes. Why Why don't I remember? I mean, I love food. Um, yeah. So we had 
nice stuff to eat there um, while we didn't pay attention and Philip, my son, uh, peed all over himself, uh, which was a great thing to do there because there were so many toilets, not, uh, but <laughs> totally different story. Um, and from there we went to Whistler. From Whistler we went to Kamloops. Uh, we had a small stop in a, I can't even call it a town, like just a camp spot in between, uh, of which I posted a photo on Instagram back then from uh, of me and Philip sitting next to a really beautiful lake. And from there, um, we drove to Jasper. And I have to tell you, everything up there was already like super pretty and like the oohs and ahs were constantly coming out of our RV. Um, <clears throat> but the road between Jasper and Banff was like the high of the entire trip. Um, it was so beautiful. I think we were there in the right season as well because there was still some snow on the mountains and I'm a real sucker for mountains and especially when they still have snow on them or have snow on them. Um, I just get really excited when I see mountains with snow. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was beautiful. We saw a bear. Um, and <laughs> I already said, like, my one goal for this trip was seeing a bear out, uh, in real life, you know, not in a zoo, but like a wild uh, bear. So when I saw one, I do have a clip of this. If I remember, I'll put it here. Um, I started cursing. <laughs> And I uh, kind of didn't stop for like 10 minutes because I was like, oh my, you know. Um, I got what I wanted. So uh, we took pictures and video and stuff like that. And um, Philip <laughs> was asleep because he was like constantly sleeping when we were driving. <laughs> He was like, oh, my parents are so tiring. I, I just have to, you know, catch up on some sleep. Those guys, they never stop talking. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so that, that if I have to give you one tip, if you don't have a lot of time and you want to go see something, um, go there. Just fly to Calgary and drive from Banff to Jasper and back or whatever. Um, I thought that was just one of the most beautiful things I saw. Um, so from there, we went to Calgary, just for a little stop uh, on the way to Yellowstone. Um, so we didn't really spend the night there, but obviously I Googled and found uh, there was a really nice yarn shop there. So uh, I tricked Seep into saying, into thinking that we were going to get some groceries for, you know, having some food on the road and then stopping at a uh, small spark parking space. And I'm like, oh, there's a yarn shop here. <laughs> I'm going in, bye-bye. So, <laughs> uh, and that yarn shop was the stash Needle Art Lounge, I think. Um, something like that. I will try and look it up um, if I remember and put it down uh, under the video. Um, if I don't, please ask me if you want to know. Um, which was a wonderful shop. Uh, had the like gorgeous yarns. Uh, a lot of hand dyed yarns. <laughs> yeah. If you're in the neighborhood, or even if you're not really in the neighborhood, but you have the chance to go there, just <laughs> go uh, and bring your wallet because, you know, otherwise you can't buy stuff. Um, <laughs> so 
yeah, I I bought I, I didn't bring it, which is stupid. But I bought um, Fawn Fawn and the Fox yarn there. I think um, just really lovely yarn. Then from Calgary we went to Yellowstone, um, and the drive up there was like a lot of nothing <laughs> and we don't know that here because I think we don't have places here in the Netherlands or even in Europe I think where you can drive for hours and just see like five houses or something like that um, also probably because we have a lot of highways but also because it's just more crowded, I think. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, <laughs> there were a lot of times like that we were like, okay, um, if this RV breaks down here, we are in serious trouble, Sherlock. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I remember <laughs> one place, and I'm not sure where it was. I think it was somewhere over there. Um, that they were like signing, okay, if you need fuel, you have to get it now because <laughs> otherwise you're not gonna make it. And Seep is someone that loves to gamble with fuel. Um, and I'm not, especially not with a kid uh, in your vehicle and the fact that it was super quiet on the road. Like there was not really, and we didn't have a cell, we didn't have a reception on our cell phones for a lot of, those times so I was like yeah we should just go and get some fuel here and he was like no no we're gonna get we're gonna make it blah 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 and then we drove past it and <laughs> I think we were like 10 miles past it and I was like um I don't know about you but I can see that tank thing meter dropping and dropping <laughs> this is not going to be okay we're we're turning around so i convinced him to turn around and like fill up the tank i'm not even sure why i let him drove drive past it but whatever um really interesting <laughs> um so then we came uh, we went to yellowstone park which was really nice as well. Um, we were there for like three days uh, on different camp spots. And from there we went to, good one. We went to this cute village where I, uh, went to a woolen mill which is probably pretty known from there I'm not sure if it's known across the entire US or whatever uh, but they had these really nice woolen woven blankets um, and it's called something with a P I'm <laughs> I have my cell here so I'm just going to check what it was because I just have to tell you um, it was why can't I find this something with a P come on <laughs> okay well um I'm afraid I'm going to have to check this later and just tell you. I'm, I'm actually just going through the route we drove and still can't find it, which is weird. It's pretty weird. Um, yeah, I'm just, this annoys me very much. Pendleton, it's, uh, I didn't even see it on my screen. It's just, it was still there in my memory. That's a relief. 
uh, yeah, Pendleton. Um, and obviously we stopped at more locations because you don't drive that in, uh, you don't drive all these, you know, distances in one day. So we, st I think we drove like from when we went to Calgary to, uh, Yellowstone, we had one day of a lot of driving, like nine hours or so, but all the other days we were like driving for, I'd say four to five hours something like that and sometimes even like only two hours or so um so yeah Pendleton um which was really nice and um from Pendleton we like took the nice route back to Seattle we didn't have time to go to Portland anymore which was a shame but you have to make decisions uh, and I didn't want to rush everything like going like stopping everywhere but stopping so short that you don't even really get to see where you are um, so we were like okay I'd rather just spend some time uh, checking some small villages out and like really nice nature and stuff and having some days in Seattle left to you know, check, check that out, um, instead of rushing and doing everything in one day. So, um, we went back to Seattle, uh, which was really nice. Um, and I actually, on the way there, I messaged, um, uh, Tina from the Tea House Knits podcast um because I knew she was in Seattle and I was like you know uh, maybe we can meet up um which we did so uh that was really nice because Tina is like uh the best person ever <laughs> she was um yeah it was great they invited uh us to come to their home uh, have dinner with them and then and they have like these two super cute daughters and then she was crazy enough and sweet enough to offer us like the offer uh, of the year um, and tell us like why don't you come um, over tomorrow which was our last day in Seattle and spend the night here. So before you have, before you go on your flight, you can sleep in a proper bed because, uh, yeah, our RV was big, but the mattresses were like very thin. Um, <laughs> and on top of that, she said, why don't you leave Philip? at our place because on Wednesdays apparently they uh, have all these parents and kids over to come and play uh, and take our car and go to a nice restaurant just the two of you so you have like a few hours to yourselves <laughs> and we were like ah uh, are you serious <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we ended up doing that. We actually felt a little bit bad about it because, I mean, can you really do that? But, yeah, she kind of, she was like, yeah, you can do that. I you Just do that. So uh, we did, and um, we went to this really nice restaurant she recommended. Uh, I forgot the name, obviously, because I forget everything. Um... Yeah, so we were, uh, we had a really nice dinner, came back, um, Philip loved playing there because they had like the huge, a huge basement where they had like 510,000 toys. So he was like, wow, I'm in heaven. Um, <laughs> and uh, they fed him over there. It was like you don't get a better service ever anywhere. 
um, so yeah, when we went, when we came back, he was like, um, are you back already? Can you just go, uh, away again? Uh, so yeah, he had the best time. Um, and we had a nice relaxing moment before we had to, um, uh, fly back again. So that was great. So if Tina is watching this, thank you again, Tina. You're, you're great. Um, and I also met up with Yarn Engineer uh, on Instagram um, because um, she commented on one of my photos like, hey, were you in Seattle? Like when we were, I think in Vancouver or maybe a little bit further on our trip. Um, and she said like, oh, I live in um, Seattle as well. And she's originally Dutch or from Holland. Um, so I was like, oh, that's, that's, I didn't know that. That's cool. Um, so I said, we are coming back to Seattle at the end of our trip. Maybe we can meet up. So this was the biggest coincidence ever because Seattle is really big. But the place we were staying with our RV um, when, like, the, the first days when we got back to Seattle were actually near, like, literally across the street from the place where she uh, hangs out on, I'm not sure what, what day, Tuesday or Wednesdays, um, to knit with her knitty, knitting friends. So she was like, uh, you're right across the street from me, uh, let's meet up. Which was uh, great because um, Seep wanted to visit the Boeing factory and I couldn't go with him because they didn't allow small kids. So someone had to stay behind with Philip. So I said, okay, you just go there, I'll drop you off. And then in the meantime, I'll go and meet up with her and drink coffee and knit. So we actually took a photo, which I totally forgot to post on Instagram. So I still have a photo, but uh, it's not on Instagram and I'm not even sure it's still on my phone. I think I put it in iCloud things. So I'm not, I can't show you right now. Um, <laughs> but that was really nice as well. A really, really nice person, a uh, really beautiful person as well. Um, which is maybe weird to say, but she's gorgeous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you sometimes have that. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so then we, on Thursday morning, we, um, took our flight back and that was it actually. So, um, obviously in somewhat of a nutshell, um, if you want to know more about this trip or other recommendations I might have, uh, please just ask me because then I'll just, you know, flip through all my photos and I can tell you a bit more about certain areas or whatever. Um, so when we got back, or not, not actually when we got back, while we were there, before we, um, before we took off, we visited some houses. We checked on some houses that were for sale. And while we were there, um, our negotiation for the house I'm in right now actually started. Uh, so on the road, somewhere, somewhere between Banff and Yellowstone, I think, we bought this house, um, <laughs> which was kind of a thing to do because we constantly didn't have any reception with our cell phones. So then we would get, um, uh, you know, uh, how do you say that? I'm not sure. They, they would send us a price or whatever and we had to respond, um, which was impossible if your cell phone is not working and there is no Wi-Fi or whatever. So, um, but yeah, we, we, uh, 
we bought this house. So when we came back, we actually already started or immediately started planning what needed to be done. Um, like the bottom floor of the house was just rebuilt by the previous owners, but we still had to do uh, a bathroom and a toilet. So, uh, and the garden, uh, we still have to do the garden. <laughs> so we're going to do that when spring uh, hits us again. Um, so yeah, um, that was pretty busy because Yeah, we had to pack everything, you know, moving isn't, it's not my hobby or something. Um, but uh, yeah, um, and I have to say the builders were here for quite a, a longer time than um, we planned and I liked. <laughs> because every time I had everything like pretty much cleaned up again they would barge in again with you know plaster and stuff like that and everything would be super filthy again uh so i was uh getting a little bit <laughs> annoyed by the whole process um yeah and obviously we had to sell our uh, old house as well and we had to fix up things in the old house as well so we did that so we had a lot of weekends um, in which we were you know doing stuff uh, in and around the two houses and um, right around that time and here is the reason why this episode is called the elephant in the room which is probably not the elephant in the room kind of thing you were expecting because normally when someone's talking about an elephant in a room, um, in a knitting podcast at least, they're wearing something knitted. And this obviously isn't knitted. And I can't really sew, so this is just a store-bought sweater. Um, no, the elephant in the room is actually me because I'm super prego. <laughs> so right around that time, we found out that I was pregnant. Um, so that I wasn't just super grumpy, but that I also had a lot of hormones making me extra grumpy uh, next to the fact that I was super tired. So planning wise, we were doing great. Um, so, so yeah, um, obviously we're super thrilled about it. Um, but uh, yeah, we still uh, could do better on planning stuff. But <laughs> Things happen the way they do, right? So then, um, yeah, we had to move um, with me being pregnant and uh, not being able to carry everything. So she was already like, mm, you planned this really well. And I was like, okay, that's the one plus there is that I'm not really allowed to carry as much because um, I'm not sure if you remember from like years back uh, in the podcast, I was in a wheelchair during my first pregnancy because I had all these pelvic issues. I couldn't walk anymore. So to prevent that from happening, or at least make sure that it's not so, as bad, um, they immediately told me to not, um, you know, not uh, work that hard, carry all these heavy stuff. This you know, what they tell people to do. So, um, yeah, we just, we just had to deal with it. Um, but yeah, the move actually went pretty well. 
uh, it's been quite of a, I mean, it was hectic, but um, I was like, once everything's in this house, whether it's one big mess or not, uh, at least it's all here. And it's just a matter of unpacking and tidying up, right? So, I mean, you can make it as difficult or, yeah, you can make it as difficult as you want, but it's pretty easy, actually. You just have to pack everything up and just ship it to the next house and unpack it. Um, and maybe throw away some things, Caroline. Yeah. Um, not totally there yet. <laughs> I really have to watch the Marie Kondo show a little bit more. Um, though I already, uh, you know, put away a lot of things, but yeah, good inspiration. Um, yeah, so we're here now since the end of September, and I think we were able to use our new bathroom by... The end of October, November, beginning of November, I think November. Um, so yeah, um, it, after we moved, we had to like, uh, you know, do things a little bit different for a few months before we were able to really settle in. Um, so yeah, and then we had Christmas. Oh, and before Christmas, we actually went on a weekend to Berlin, which I posted about on Instagram, uh, because I went to a really nice yarn shop there, and I bought fabulous yarn, um, which I'm just going to show you right now. I could save it for stash acquisition things, but um, why not? So first of all, I bought this book. Um, which I love. I mean, there are a lot of nice knitting books, but this actually contains, like, almost everything in this book I would like to knit slash wear. So, yeah. And I really like the pictures, and yeah. Really nice book. Um, and this is issue four. Winter spring 2018 yeah um i'm going to show you uh, a design in this later because that's what i'm knitting on at least that's what i have to knit on and then i bought this gorgeous yarn And I absolutely love this. Um, this is La Bien Aimé, um, which a lot of you will know in the souvenir color. And I just love this. It's, it's like a grayish base tone. It comes out a little bit more pink on the screen, I see, with all these nice speckles. And I love speckles. And I think this is going to be a really nice sweater. At least that's why I bought four, so I can make a really nice sweater. Um, and I'm thinking of making a boxy sweater with this or at least like the design of the sweater is boxy so I'm not sure whether I'm going to knit the boxy sweater by Hohi Locatelli or just something that's similar to that style like something that's where the sleeves are a little bit more fitted and the rest is just you know a little bit wide so whenever I pop out this baby and my belly is like flippery flabbery, you know, going all the way, not looking good to go and put on a bikini or something else. I can put on a sweater like that and no one will notice. At least that's 
the idea. So, uh, yeah, really happy with this yarn. I mean, I almost don't want to knit it up because I think looking at these skeins is so cute. I, I love to look at these skeins. Um, but actually, this is my second day of my maternity leave. So uh, what better way to spend the weeks before giving birth to this baby, knitting myself a really nice sweater. Like, you know, you can wear this after you gave birth as some kind of a present to myself. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think I am going to have to do that. Um, so yeah, that's what I bought in Berlin. And I think from there on, we can just start and dig in the stuff I've put around me because yeah, um, after that, we just had Christmas in our new home, um, which was really nice. And then, uh, January came and now it's February again. Actually, it's Valentine's Day today, so happy Valentine's Day, at least today, the day I'm recording. Probably not the day you're watching, but, you know. So maybe, just maybe, I will get something nice today. I'm not sure, but if I do, I will post on Instagram. Um, and obviously I have to make sure that I have something in return. Uh, which I already have, because I'm good uh, with things like that. So, um, yeah, just I'll just move on to what I'm knitting. Um, I think I will start with what I am knitting, and then I will tell you more about what I finished these last months. And then I will show you my... Um, ridiculous stash enhancements. Um, so do not tag C uh, if you want to share this video anywhere uh, because we just have to pretend that this was already in my stash, okay? Just between you and me. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm starting with what I just showed you. Because from this book, I am knitting. I should have put some something in, on the page um, that I want to look up because this is going to take me a while. Yes, I am knitting that Kate um, sweater cardigan. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's, I think it's just a really nice basic um, sweater that you can wear with a lot of things. Um, I really like the lace detail or like that small, the small, the striping detail um, on the front. The construction actually is really interesting as well because you start with one shoulder, just go down, then you knit this part, then you knit the back, then you... take it all together and start just working your way kind of in the round, not in the round because it obviously is a cardigan. Um, yeah, it, I thought it was interesting. It's totally different from what I was used to, so nice. The only modification I am going to make is um, the button band is just plain stockinette, if you can see that. Um, so it rolls a little bit. Um, and although I like how the way it looks in these photos, I always, when I have a rolling part in a design, it rolls way, um, way worse than 
what I see on the picture. So my idea is to, to do just one by one rib because the bottom of uh, the cardigan and the cuffs are actually one by one rib as well. So I'm just going to do that. You can see here that it, you know, it rolls a little bit, which makes for these, you know, moon kind of shapes. Um, and I just don't want, I don't want the shirt I'm wearing underneath this peeking through because it's going to roll too much. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do one by one rib for that. And now I'm going to show you where I am with that. And I actually didn't work on this for the past weeks uh, because I really have to find the courage to start the second sleeve, which is where I am. So I actually already knit quite a bit. Um, and I started this after Christmas, so I think I was making pretty nice progress. And then I just, the last four weeks, I didn't do anything on this uh, sweater. Uh, which is dumb because I could have already finished it. Um, so yeah, this is it. This is the sleeve. I use a tubular bind off. I'm not sure whether that's visible. Um, it just doesn't stretch <laughs> that much, uh, which is typically something for me, but I think I can just fit through. Let's just check. Yeah, it's snug, but it should work. If it's not really working, then <laughs> I'm just going to take it out and try again. I didn't block this, obviously, so... Um, yeah, let's just hope it's going to be a little wider after blocking. Yeah, what can I tell you? The um, yarn I dyed uh, myself. Um, yeah, it's like it has, it actually has a lot of colors in it. So what I did for this was I actually dyed the skeins in a lot of colors and then over dyed the skeins with black so you have all these muted colors uh, because otherwise it would be too um, bright for my taste and it comes up a little bit redder than it is it's more like a grayish purple tone um, in real life with a little bit of red in it um, yeah, what can I say? Um, I just have to pick up for the second sleeve right here and just knit the sleeve because if I do that, I only have to do the button bands and the, the collar and then I'm done. And then I can actually wear this, which would be really nice. And I already checked and it fits me quite well also lengthwise, which is normally a problem for me, uh, but I need a little longer than the pattern says. Uh, and I did the same for the sleeve because I don't want, you know, sleeves that are too short. You can also already see it because this is a store-bought sweater and you can see like, there could have been a little bit more fabric here, but uh, yeah. That's what happens uh, when I buy sweaters. Um, so yeah, um, I just have to finish this. Finish it! Um, which actually brings me to the fact that I actually wanted to show you my bucket of shame uh, this episode. Uh, but I didn't bring it because I was like, yeah, do we have to really get into that right now? Um, but I think it's time that I'm going to show you that, like, next time or whatever. Um, because I have a bucket of shame. Or whatever you would like to call it. And the bucket contains 
a lot of whips that are never finished that I don't frog because I'm like, um, I already worked a lot on these things, so I shouldn't frog them. Though I'm not finishing them. Um, so <laughs> they're like these really sad half done knits that are all creeping together to cry. Um, <laughs> so yeah. And I know there are a few things in there that I didn't finish because I ran out of yarn and I couldn't come up with a good solution to, you know, use it in another way. So I might ha actually have to get your advice on that. Um, but they're all, <laughs> well, not all, because in the meantime, this past year, I obviously collected a few new ones, but a lot of them are projects that I've showed you in this podcast and you probably think, what happened to this sweater? What happened to that? You never saw. It finished and some people might be nice and think, oh, she just finished that ages ago and, you know, to her it's not a finished object object anymore so she's not going to show us uh no it just <laughs> i just never finished it um yeah so <laughs> what can i say um i'm a naughty girl so um yeah that's the case sweater um and the yarn is fingering weight um just so you know so it's just Fingering weight stock yarn. Um, then I am knitting on, and before I am going to show you, I have to obviously reveal the gender because otherwise you know right away, which already says a lot, so you probably already know right by now. Um, but after Philip, who is a boy, we are having a girl. Um, which I'm super excited about. Not that I wouldn't be excited if it was a boy, a, like a second boy, because um, I would have liked that just as much. But um, this is going to be the first girl on my side of the family because my sister has three boys. Um, so my mom was like, okay, you know, we don't really care, but if it's possible, could you maybe, you know, uh, try and <laughs> have a girl? <laughs> because there are way too many men in this family right now. And we don't need an entire soccer team, so um, maybe, you know, we can have just the slightest bit of pink in the family. Uh, also because I already told them, if I'm having a girl, um, I like pink, like muted pink, not the really bright pink. I think that's just too heavy. Um, so I already told my mom, like, if this is going to be a girl, please don't only buy pink things because I just like neutrals really well and I do like blue for for girls as well so um, yeah we are having a girl um, which was yeah totally unexpected and expected because for some reason I just really felt that this was a girl but I'm not superstitious in that way so I was like yeah um, it's not like you can feel what you know, what gender the baby is. I, I just don't believe that. So, uh, yeah. Then we heard it was a girl and I was like, see, I told you so. Not like I knew. Um, yeah. So we're super excited. And I was like, okay, I have a lot of boys clothes. I have a lot of blue already because, you know, Philip is a boy. Um, so I am going to get myself a little bit of pink. Um, so I am knitting on these right now, which are mittens, um, 
simple, no thumb because hands are really small when they are born. And my due date is March 26th. So that's uh, within six weeks. Oh, that is um, a little bit scary. Um, but uh, yes, sometimes, just sometimes, reality hits and I'm like, uh-oh, within two months we're going to have a baby in this house and we are not going to sleep and, um, you know, it's going to be busy. Uh, but then I just look outside and think, hey, I still have time to knit. So. <laughs> Let's just talk about that. So I'm knitting these. I don't use a pattern for it. Um, I just cast it on the second one. Um, it's just super simple. I just did this by just looking at the baby stuff we already have and just cast it on. Um, so I might write this up, although it's like super easy. I think I um, cast it on 40 stitches on needle two and a half mil. Uh, I love these needles, by the way. Uh, they're from Knit Pro Zing, uh, and that is Knitter's Pride in the US. Um, I really, really like these. Um, I really like the entire Zing line. They're smooth, they're super light. Um, I just Really like them so I have them in a lot of sizes by now um, so yeah I'm using this yarn um, by drops and yeah it's pretty I, I like the color that's why I bought it um, because it's a really soft it's a little bit of a muted pink uh, which I like I don't like I said, I don't like the really um, bright pinks for babies. Um, so yeah. Um, so I cast it on 40 stitches, did a 2x2 two two rib for 16 rows, and then knit until the total amount of rows was 40. So I knit another 24 rows uh, just in stockinette. And then I started decreasing just like you would do for a regular sock. And then um, when I had, I'm not sure how many stitches left. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or 10 left. I'm not sure um, on each needle that is. Um, I did a, a Kitchener bind off or a Kitchener stitch uh, to close the top, which just looks like that. And that's it. And this is such a small thing. You actually knit this in like, a, you, knit, you can knit this within two hours. I think a set would cost you like three to four hours, depending on how fast you knit. So if you want to knit a small baby gift, this is super simple. You can do it by head. You don't have to like follow a really uh, intense pattern. Uh, you could also do the decreases different, like decrease um, like you would for a hat, for instance, instead of this. Uh, that doesn't really matter, actually as long as it's a little bit rounded at the top, maybe another decrease would look even better, I'm not sure, um, but super easy. And then I might finish this off with an eye cord attached to this one and to the other one to, you know, pop it through a, pop them through a um, jacket. So they, if they fall off her hands, uh, we won't lose them. So yeah, um, just a really tiny project to do in between because I should actually work on the sweater, but I was thinking I want to knit something for the baby because, you know, 
second day of my maternity leave and I couldn't figure out what I wanted to knit because I was actually thinking um, I should knit her a nice sweater for next winter because obviously she will be born by the end of, by the end of March then it could still be uh, cold for like a few weeks or even a few months uh, well not months like for a month I guess, I guess. Um, but since I still have small um, knitted sweaters that I made Philip when he was small um, in super gender, gender neutral colors uh, though I don't think any gender really owns a color um, I was thinking I should knit her something for next winter um, yeah because then she will have a different size than Philip had in his first winter so I'm not sure what she can wear um, that I knit for him um, so yeah yeah uh, that was a long story. Then I also knit her these from the same yarn um, and I used uh, like hand knit sock yarn, uh, hand knit, hand dyed sock yarn for the color work hearts and these are socks. Um, if you haven't guessed already so uh, yeah it's better if I can I can show you better like this uh, but it's the same yarn um, and yeah just what can I say also knit on two and a half mils so when I finished these I was like I'm going to make something else with the same yarn and then just thought okay then I'm going to make like somewhat matching mitt mittens and I thought it would be nice to add something color workish to the socks. So I added these tiny hearts. I thought that was cute. So I uh, increased a few stitches before doing these hearts so it wouldn't be way snugger uh, than the ribbing. So you can still put them on. Um, I might write down the pattern for these just uh, if I find the time in the upcoming weeks just to uh, you know have something nice have a nice simple pattern for when you want to knit someone a baby present or something because obviously you could still you could switch up the colors and you know maybe I, I would throw in another color uh, color work um, design as well for if you don't like hearts but would like something else. Uh, or you could just dismiss the color work and knit them without color work. Uh, so yeah, the same yarn and a hand dyed um, sock yarn. Then, uh, like way, way, way back, uh, when I first found out I was pregnant, well, not when I, when we already moved here and I was finally getting my energy back. That's when I knit this. Because the first few months of my pregnancy, and actually this was the same for when I was pregnant with Philip, I didn't have the energy to knit. I didn't have the energy to do whatever. I just came home from work and I was like, I don't want to cook, I don't want to eat, I just want to go to bed and see you tomorrow. Um, yeah, <laughs> so a lot of times I did just that. Um, but when I felt better I started this one and this is a cardigan uh, also made out of my own hand dyed yarn. Uh, kind of looks like the same yarn-ish. Um, that I'm using for the Kate cardigan, but it's not, uh, but it's the same idea, 
like a lot of different colors and then muted them down. Uh, though this one is a little bit more purplish and this one has purple, greens and some orange speckles. So you might be able to see a little bit better like this. This is the back and um, also didn't use a pattern, um, just cast on the number of stitches that I thought was okay. I uh, used raglan increases and I knit a small cable next to each button band. I'm not sure whether you can see that. Yeah, you might be able to see that there and also there. It's not really good lighting to show you, but if I hold it like this, I assume you can see it over here. It's just a simple cable, which shows up a little bit better in, uh, you know, when you see it in real life. Um, yeah, what can I say? I just winged this. Um, I knitted it a little bit longer than you normally see sweaters, I think, because um, Philip is really tall. I'm pretty tall for a woman, um, and Sheep is really tall. Um, like I'm 180 centimeters and he is two meters and Philip they there are already people asking me when Philip is going to turn four uh, So I answer <laughs> uh, When he first turns three then after a year he turns four because he's still two But he looks like he's already in school. He's super tall like his all of the kids his age are like this much smaller. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'm guessing this one will be tall as well. So um, I want to be able to, I want her to be able to wear this a little longer than, you know, for just a few weeks or so. Um, so yeah. And the next thing I want to knit her is something that's like significantly bigger. So she actually has something to next to grow into. Um, but I'm also going to check on the squares that I still have from when Philip was little because I knit those in like super neutral colors as well. So just checking what I should knit in which size. Then um, and this is something I finished a while ago, but I still wanted to show you because this was one of my, you know, let's just laugh about it kind of things. Because, because I wanted to knit Seep a new um, hat for his birthday because he was, you know, he was kind of complaining, whining about the fact that I didn't knit him something for quite a while. Um, so instead of saying, you know, don't be so ungrateful, I'll try to teach you how to knit, knit it yourself. I was like, okay, I'll just do that. I will knit you something. And he was talking about that he really wanted a new hat. So I was like, I'll knit you a hat if you want a hat. And um, so I was like, okay, that's, that's a good thing to add to what I'm giving him for his birthday. So I started a hat and I thought, let's use cables. And then um, I didn't use a pattern I'm not sure why I'm not using patterns these days, uh, which is probably why this didn't really turn out great. Um, <laughs> I didn't use a pattern and I totally didn't think about the fact that if you knit cables, 
the circumference of a head is going to be way smaller and tighter because cables pull the yarn together and stuff like that. So <laughs> this is the head that was supposed to be <laughs> for sheep, the two meter tall guy. Um, yeah, I don't even, it doesn't even really fit my head. Um, yeah, the <laughs> bottom part, though, was pretty stretchy. So I tried that on numerous of times and I was like, oh, that fits great. Uh, but then I started the cables and obviously <laughs> it got to uh, a point where the circumference uh, wouldn't even, I don't know, go over the small head. Um, so yeah, uh, looks nice. <laughs> the pro is that Philip can wear this. So I'm like, okay, I just knit him a hat and nothing's going on. But obviously I couldn't fit this, um, I couldn't uh, do anything with this yet because it was supposed to be a present and so it was supposed to be a surprise. Uh, so like three or four days before his birthday, I found out that this was way too small. Um, so I had to like come up with something really quick. And since I was, a little bit done with the cabling, just a little bit. And <laughs> I didn't feel like doing all the math to find out the right circumference for the big head he has. Um, I was like, okay, I'll just keep this for Philip and he wears it this winter. So it's actually pretty, pretty nice because I didn't intend to knit another hat for Philip, but now he has one. And you can see that it's... <laughs> that, you know, the first part is going fine, but the second part, not so fine. Um, so, yeah. so I thought, okay, uh, let's knit Seep another hat that will definitely fit him um, and will stay on. So I thought, let's do one just in simple rib because that hugs your head, though it has a lot of stretch. So I'm, you know, then you know for sure that it's somehow going to fit him. So then I knit this one. Um, for my hand-eyed yarn, the other one as well, uh, actually. Um, this is the, I'm not sure what colorway it is anymore. Uh, summer storm, I think. Um, I held two strands together. Um, yeah, so if I find a time someday, I might write up the pattern and make it a children's pattern or something. Uh, because I do think it looks nice. Uh, but enough about that. <laughs> so um, I just thought let's knit him a ribbed hat, uh, which I did with uh, hand-dyed yarn, uh, my own yarn in the DK base. And I just did a two by two rib for a very long time, uh, which I know, I know now is super boring <laughs> after you've like completed up to here and you're like, oh, I still have to do a, a lot. Because what he was saying when he was complaining about wanting a new hat is that he wanted a hat with a long enough brim to fold it in half so he would have really nice warm ears when the weather would be really cold outside. So I was like, okay, so you don't only want socks with a super long leg but you also want your hats to be super long. Now, what's up with that? You know, I mean, 
we don't all have the time to knit people super long stuff because everything has to be long with him. So I was like, the only thing that I could knit like normal would be a hat, but so, um, <laughs> I knit this and yeah, what can I say? I just knit it up to the point where I thought, okay, you can fold the brim in half now and still have enough room for the head. And then I just decreased. Um, I'm not sure whether you can see this really well. Um, in a way that the stripes would continue for as long as possible. Um, so yeah, and this is a really nice hat. I mean, I, I wear it a lot of times right now as well. Uh, because he has several hats that I knit him. And <laughs> the fun thing is that today he went to work on his bike and wore like a color work hat that I knit him years ago. And I'm like, okay, so uh, now your old hats are fine enough. <sighs> Whatever. Um, so yeah, and you can also fold this and then it's snug and, you know, so, um, I'm actually pretty pleased that I knit this hat because I can wear it as well and I like it. So if I can't find my hat, I'm like, okay, I'm wearing your hat and you just have to wear something else because, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's it. And I'm not sure on which needle. I think I knit this on a three millimeter needle. Again, no pattern. Um, I might check the amount of stitches I cast on and the number of rows and stuff like that to write it up once for you guys. Um, and then the last thing I made and the idea from this comes from a pattern I saw on Revelry, though I didn't use that pattern. Um, and now I'm totally blinking on the name of the pattern, but you'll be able to find it. I knit this headband, um, actually as a birthday present for my sister, whose birthday is next Thursday. Um, Saturday, it's Thursday today. What are you saying? Um, yeah, um, you will be able, if you search for headband on Ravelry and then uh, click the way it's sorted and you make the results short on. Uh, popular right now or something, it will pop up on the first page and it's a free pattern. Uh, though it's a brioche pattern and it looks similar to this, actually it looks a lot uh, super similar to this because it's also gray. Um, but I wasn't, I didn't want to do brioche and I thought it was a little bit narrow, the headband. So I wanted it wider, I didn't want brioche. So I did a one by one rib with more stitches. I wrote everything down, but um, I don't remember now. Um, and I just figured out how long it had to be to, you know, do this crossing, which you do by first knitting half of the stitches on one side and then on the other though there is one small trick involved to make sure that the edges look nice. And then knitting to the other half, if you know. Uh, and then I used a Kitchener stitch to seam it up so it wouldn't be as obvious, the seam. Though it still is because I made a, uh, a small mistake. Because Kitchener stitching in one by one rib obviously needs to be done different than when it would have only been knit stitches. Um, and that's not something she does in her pattern, I believe. She just um, 
makes you sew the back together um, in a, I don't know, metro stitch, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, and this is not really neat, as you can see. Right here, that's where it went okay. And right there as well. But in the middle, I did something weird. Um, but yeah, you know, shit happens. Um, and it's really stretchy and I like it. Uh, she has a somewhat smaller head than I have, I think. Um, but yeah, I thought this was nice. Uh, and they're still going on a ski trip. So I was like, that's a nice addition to uh, the other present I bought her. And I'm not going to say because I know she doesn't watch this, but for some reason it's possible that she watches this when I say what present I got her. So then at least she only knows half of what she's getting. Um, so yeah. That's actually what I finished. So um, the only other thing that I'm going to show you is what I have for planned projects. Um, so I'm going to show you that. Um, the first thing is something of which I'm like, why are you doing this to yourself? Um, because Seep was also complaining about the fact that he wanted a sweater. And you guys might remember the fact that I already started a sweater for him. And it's also in the bucket of shame. It never got finished. I can't, I just really can't frog it. Uh, because I already, there are already so many hours in it. But I dread the idea of finishing it because it's, there's still so much to do. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a new one. And then for some reason, I had the stupid idea to make him pick the yarn. Um, no, not the yarn. Uh, to make him pick the pattern. Why? Because... And at that time, I was still like, oh, this might be interesting to knit this. Um, and interesting it's going to be, my friends. Because he chose this. Hello. Um, and then I was so stupid to actually purchase this pattern, look at the back. It has like 5,365,421 cables in it. And I was so stupid to actually purchase the pattern and then <laughs> buy like the biggest box of yarn to make it <laughs> um and then tell him i will finish this because in a while i will be on maternity leave and i'll have the time which is super dumb because maternity leave is for me you know maternity leave that the thing you know, the weeks prior to giving birth are to, you know, get massages, getting your nails done, um, just sit back, relax, knit on stuff you want to knit on, watch a whole lot of Netflix, and that's it. So, um, I might just, um, you know, blame the hormones and tell him that I will knit on it someday, but not right now. Um, I'm not sure. But <laughs> I can't even seem to get myself to knit a swatch for it. That's not a good start. 
Um, so yeah, just so you know, that's something that you might see or don't see in the not near future. <coughs> so yeah, then for my birthday, first time, first time that I got this for my birthday from him, first time I got yarn from for my birthday from him, first time I got yarn period from him, I think, because I always find a way to buy stuff for myself and then he's like, <laughs> we have like 500 balls of yarn in this house, you don't need more yarn. But I convinced him because, as always, he was late getting me a present. So I actually got this big bag of yarn from Holstgarn, which is in Denmark, because I really want to knit a colorwork sweater for myself, which is a way better project than doing stuff like that. Um, and I was actually thinking about the colorwork sweater that Kristen from Full and Vine knit, which is called the Damjaka Lopa, I think. Um, and I'm not sure whether that's the one that's um, that I'm going to knit, but um, I did get the yarn. So. Um, I'm just going through these colors quite fast. So I got, sorry for the crinkling, I should have prepared this better, but you know me, I never prepare stuff. So I got four balls of this heathery light gray in the color. No gap. Uh, and I really like that color, so that's going to be one of the base colors, I think. Then I have five balls of this. It's not black, it's like really, 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 really dark gray, but you know, you could. It's. Yeah, that kind of shows it. In the light, uh, which is graph graphite, graphite, um, and then I got some different colors to, you know, put on the yoke. Um, just colors that I liked together, and I'm not sure which ones I will use because obviously I got more colors than I need for the sweater. Because once I was checking out the website, I was like, oh, I like this color as well. And then I just think you shouldn't, you know, restrain yourself and just go for it. So <laughs> that's what I did. So I got this one. It's like a whinish purple red, uh, which is called Jasper. And that's actually why I wanted it as well, because my brother's name is Jasper. So I was like, I'm going to do that which is also why we bought a nice sweater uh, in Jasper for my brother Jasper. Uh, then this one, this is a bluish purple, purple haze it's called. Really nice, love it. Then this one is crocus, which is a lavender-y, grayish lavender, I'd say. And I already like these ones a lot together. Then I have this one, which is Damask. It's a little bit more pink in it. And I thought these were really nice together. Then this super nice bluish green, sage blue. And then I have another green, which is more yellowish green uh, which is called Heath so you can see the difference between them which I really like with pink so it's, it's going to be something like this in the sweater together with you know the neutral grays and then I have this one sweet pea 
which I really like spot. And the nice thing about this yarn is it's super heathery. So this is, if you really look at the strands well, you can see yellow in them and pink in them. And I'm not sure whether you can see that on screen, but you can see that uh, they're like different colors together form the color, so to speak. And then this one, Venetian, which is a pretty bright red. It comes across more bright on the screen though. It's a little bit more wineish red um, than what you see here. It looks a little bit more bloody uh, on my screen at least. Um, so yeah, then I'm going to try to show them to you all. Then these are all the colors I got. So yeah, I'm going to make a nice combination with those. I think this looks great as well. So I might use this pink or even use them both. Something like this. I like that. Um, and then use the other ones for nice color work mittens or something like that because I really want to make color work mittens as well. Uh, because I have them um, in my um, queue for like ages and I saw really nice um, color work mittens uh, in the podcast of Maria stitched in Sweden and the mittens are called I think they're called the January mittens I'm not sure but look it up or watch her podcast her latest one um, she made really nice mittens and then last Saturday and this is the last thing I'm going to show you because this is already a super long tiring podcast um, <laughs> for you guys um, last Saturday my knit group which I hardly ever visit because it's on a Tuesday evening and because of the pregnancy right now I'm just every time I come home I'm like please just let me go to bed um, but they organized a knit thing uh, on Saturday so I was like yes I'm going uh, so the idea was to visit a local yarn shop here, which is called Wally Hood. So not Hollywood, but Wally Hood because wool, Wally, is um, like the Dutch name for, I would say yarn, but that's not for, um, I'm totally... I totally lost it, but <laughs> whatever, let's just pretend I didn't say anything. A local yarn shop. Um, to go there and then have a high tea at one of the uh, women's place, uh, like her home. And <laughs> as always, do not put me in a yarn shop. If you don't want me to come home with stuff so I did and obviously I think I had the biggest bag again because that's me someone has to do it right um, so yeah I'm just going to show you what I bought first thing I bought is six balls of this uh, merino lace um, I really like the color and it was on sale. Do not present yarn to me that is on sale and that is as soft as this because then I just have to buy everything. So um, there are 25 gram balls, 350 meters per ball. I totally don't know what I'm going to make with this because it's lace and I already don't really finish my DK weight projects, uh, let alone lace stuff. So I might hold a double with something else, was my idea. Uh, but yeah, I bought that. Then I bought three balls of this mohair. 
um, which is called Tilia, which is 70% kid mohair and 30% silk, really soft, and that's the yarn I used for this, I didn't even say. Um, I held one strand of this together with one strand of this, uh, which is by Drops, uh, to, you know, make it a little bit more fluffy. I am super inspired by everyone using mohair together with another yarn, because it just looks so soft and fluffy, and I, I really like the halo it gives. Um, so yeah, I bought two balls of this one. Then I bought two balls of this, also by Drops. And why is this? I already have this in my stash. And this is a pretty, like, it's a little bit more rusty, rustic yarn. Um, it's not super, super soft. It's heathery. But I really like the color and I made socks for Philip out of this, like, ages ago. And they're still really nice. Um, so I saw this and I was like, okay, I really have to get this because although it's not as soft, it is, it's, it just looks really nice uh, when knitted and uh, it holds up really well. And it's kind of a shame that I now see that there's a knot in, in the ball. But yeah, it's pretty cheap yarn, so. so I got two balls of that. And then I got two balls of this super bright yellow. And it looks a little bit more warm yellow in the screen because it's in real life it's actually a little bit more cold, like greenish yellow. I'm not sure. No, there's no place in this room at least if I check the screen, where the color comes out really like it is. So, um, can't do anything about that. Um, just to, I don't know, maybe do something color workish together with this, or maybe with, the, with this yarn, um, because I also have this in other colors. Also bought that a few months ago. Uh, but let's just not call that a stash enhancement because, you know, that's already months ago. It was 2018 and we don't count yarn from last year anymore, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, so two balls of that and that's it. Um, so enough yarn to make some really nice things a while. I'm on my leave, uh, like for the baby or whatever. Um, which reminds me that before I start knitting like Mad Woman, I should actually finish her um, room. <laughs> uh, and by finishing, I mean I only uh, painted one wall and I have to do everything else still. So. Get in the furniture, wash all the clothes, decorate it all, like do everything, basically. And since I'm designing her, um, what do you call that? Her card. I'm not sure whether you do this in America, but we send everyone a birth card, um, you know, in which, on which people get notified by the fact that we had a baby. Uh, that's what we do here. Uh, everyone does. I'm not sure whether you do that. But uh, I'm designing that one myself, just as I did for Philip. Uh, and I still have to do that as well. <laughs> so I have to make sure that um, the design is ready and only has to be altered. You know, the uh, I only have to fill out the name. Um, and, or actually I don't have to fill that out because I already know that, but I'm not going to tell you. Um, but fill out the birth date and stuff like that. 
and then make sure that um, it's it's being printed by the print company um, and obviously send it out to all the people I have to send it to um, so yeah I'm not sure uh, if there's anything else to say I, I don't think so so I'm just going to leave it here and wish you a really nice day and weekend if you are watching this before this weekend and hopefully a really nice Valentine's Day uh, although I'm not sure whether you will be able to see this on Valentine's Day anyway but um, yeah and uh, I hope to see you soon bye